No, for anyone, but they're not going to be up till next semester, so they don't help you guys. <laughs> Toxins, bacteria or viruses? Bacteria. bacteria. Do viruses produce toxins? No. no. They're not alive. They can't. Hey, there are two kinds of toxins. Endotoxin? Endotoxin? An exotoxin. An exotoxin. Not N-O. Yeah. That's different. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, let's start with endotoxin. Endotoxin, where are they made out of? LPS. LPS, lipopolysaccharides. Where have you seen lipopolysaccharides before? The outer membrane of what? Yes. So remember we have gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Gram-negative have our outer membrane, right? So here's the peptidoglycan, the outer membrane, inner membrane. And we have the lipopolysaccharides on top. So do the lipopolysaccharides produce endotoxin? It is, it is the endotoxin. Okay? Don't get confused on that. So LPS is the endotoxin. Yeah, so what does that tell you about what bacteria mm -hmm. have an endotoxin? Just all gram-negative. Yeah, yeah. Gram only gram-negative because do gram-positive have lipopolysaccharides? No. no, so do any gram-positive bacteria no. have an endotoxin? No. Okay, and then what can you tell me? Do only half of gram-negative have an endotoxin? All of them, because all gram negative have lipopolysaccharides. So all gram negative. And then no gram positives. So if you're on the test and you're like, okay, I know this disease is gram negative, what do you immediately know about it? It has an endotoxin. Don't even have to guess about it. If it's gram positive, what do you know about it? It doesn't have an endotoxin. And then what else? If, some, if he says that something has an endotoxin, what do you immediately know about it? It has gram negative, so it has the lipopolysaccharides. Is that okay? Okay, so if they all have, lipo, they all have lipopolysaccharides, right? The gram negative? <coughs> so could I say, oh, in this disease, the endotoxin does this, and in this disease, the endotoxin does this. Is it different per disease? No. Are the lipopolysaccharides different in every disease? The lipopolysaccharides are built the same way if it's this bacteria or it's this bacteria. If they're gram negative, they have the same lipopolysaccharides. So E. coli is gram negative. Yeah, so what does it have? And that's why in the case study we talked about how it, we shouldn't use antibiotics. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. So every disease has the lipopolysaccharides, right? So the endotoxin in one disease, one gram negative bacteria, is going to have the same, same effects as the gram-negative lipopolysaccharide endotoxin on a different bacteria. Does that make sense? No matter what disease, the endotoxin is going to cause the same thing because they're made of the same LPS. So w there are two things that an endotoxin can cause in your body. Fever. Fever. Shock. Septic shock. What does septic shock mean? Yeah, so uh, in, uh, lowering of blood pressure. So for example, E. coli, we know it's gram-negative, so does it have an endotoxin? Yes, and what does the endotoxin cause? Fever and septic shock. No matter what disease, if it's gram-negative, it has an endotoxin that causes fever and septic shock. Why do you think it's called an endotoxin? Is it? When it says lipopolysaccharides, where are they found? On the outside? It's a mistake that it's called this to get to your thing that you said. Researchers, when they first discovered endotoxin, they found that endotoxin was released a lot more when the cell died. So they thought, oh, the cell dies and all of its toxic material comes out. Okay, but think about it this way. Lipopolysaccharides are like my skin. Am I shedding skin right now? Yes. They're shedding lipopolysaccharides all the time. But to get me to shed more skin, you could blow me up, right? If you blow me up, I'm gonna shed a lot of skin, okay? If you blow up a bacteria, it's going to shed a lot of lipopolysaccharides. So to your question about antibiotics, what do antibiotics do to bacteria? Lice. Kill them, lyse them. So guess what you're causing to happen? 
more shed of the lipopolysaccharides. So that's why I'd say if you ever give a gram-negative bacteria prescribing an antibiotic, sometimes they have a spike in fever when you give it to them because you're killing the bacteria, shedding the endotoxin, resulting in fever and septic shock. Is that okay? Another thing about lipopolysaccharides is they are shed proteins. They're kind of accidental, to be honest. He can't help it. He's just shedding it, and he's like, oh, sorry. Can't help it. Just, I can't tell my skin to stop shedding. He can't tell his lipopolysaccharides to stop, stop shedding. Would you say that endotoxin causes a localized or systemic effect on the body? Systemic. systemic. So would you say that the lipopolysaccharides are cell-specific? Do they go to one area of the body? No, so we say they're not specific. And then what about their toxicity? Are they toxic at high or low amounts? High. high. You have to have a lot of it for it to cause a problem. So high level, uh, the, the shedding. Yeah, so a high level of endotoxin is how you get the fever and septic shock. Or taking the what they Yeah, which is going to have more shedding. Does that make sense? Is that okay? I'm going to come back to that. We're going to go over here first. Okay, exotoxin. Pretty much everything we wrote over there we can compare to exotoxins. Okay, so is it made of lipopolysaccharides? No. What is it? Secreted proteins. So they're not shed. And you can't say it's, oh, this one kind of protein, like lipopolysaccharides. Because unlike endotoxin, where it's the same for every disease, exotoxin is different for the diseases. So the exotoxin in one disease will cause one thing. The exotoxin in another disease will cause com something completely different. Is that okay? So there's secreted proteins. What does that tell you about their specificity? You said here they're not specific. What do you think those ones are? They're very specific. Okay, the bacteria is making them, and they have a very specific job. Okay, so they're specific. For example, cholera. What's the major sign or symptom of cholera? Diarrhea. Diarrhea. If a disease has a exotoxin, not all diseases have them, but if a disease has one, the major signs or symptoms of that disease are caused by the exotoxin. So I'll tell you right now, cholera has an exotoxin. The major sign of cholera is diarrhea. So guess what causes the diarrhea? The exotoxin. The exotoxin. What it does is it goes to your intestines and it turns the walls of your intestines into pumps. And it pumps all the water from your body into your intestines. And that's why you have the crazy diarrhea. Would you say it's cell-specific? Yeah. Yes, very much so. Another disease that has an exotoxin is botulism. What is the sign of botulism? Do you remember? Oh. Paralysis. Like their face starts to droop and then they can't move. Guess what causes it? Exotoxin. The exotoxin. What it does is this is my muscle. You know how you have um, nerves connect to your muscles? Oh, that wasn't how I wanted to draw it. Anyways. That's a good muscle. I don't know why I drew that. Okay, anyways. We'll just cut that off right here. What the botulism toxin does is it comes in here and it blocks the connection between the neurons and your muscles so that they can't talk. Would you say that's cell specific? Yeah. yeah, okay. It's going to a very specific place in your body. What would you tell me about the toxicity? Low amounts. I'm gonna tell the guinea pig story again. So if you took a yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that from me? Yeah, I was in your chair. Oh, okay. Yesterday. I was like, are people just like saying this? Okay. <laughs> if you have a paper clip, a paper clip weighs about a gram. So if you have a paper clip size amount of an the botulism exotoxin, and you cut it up into a thousand pieces, and you took a thousandth of a paper clip, you could kill 10,000 guinea pigs with that much. 
Don't ask me how they found that out. Everyone freaks out. They're like, they killed 10,000? I don't know. <laughs> okay? But it's toxicity. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So it's toxic at low amounts. At Harvard or some big school like that, they made enough botulism toxin to kill everyone on this planet, and it was only like a gram. So, yeah, it's kind of bad. And some people inject it into their faces. Botox. Anyways. Why do you think, what, make, what happens to a person when they have Botox? They can't smile. What do you think does that? The botulism toxin. Okay, so what else can we say? What about um, what bacteria have it? It's usually gram positive, but is it always gram positive? No. no, so it can be gram positive or negative, but it's usually gram positive. I'll tell you right now, cholera has an endo and an exotoxin. So what is cholera? It must be gram negative, right? Because it has an endotoxin. So even though exotoxin is usually gram positive, cholera is a perfect example of one that is gram negative. And e. coli. Does E. coli have? Yeah, one, zero, one, oh, it has, it has an exotoxin? I didn't know that. So it's usually gram positive, but notice how I'm saying usually, not always. 